great set of pieces of tools here, okay? But there's kind of something missing. See how you've got a product here, right? You've got a product. What happens when you don't multiply? Like we've got, we've got addition, addition and subtraction are more or less the same. We've got multiplication, but we've seen that multiplication just doesn't, you don't just get the product of the derivatives, right? So we want to develop what happens if f of x is not a product here, but if it's a quotient. We want to fill this in, okay? If what I have is not u times v, uh, what happens if it's u divided by v? Okay, so what we're going to develop, and actually we have all the pieces to do this quite quickly, is the quotient rule. Okay. Now you could well go back to first principles. You can almost always go back to first principles. But we have developed tools, namely the two that I'm particularly interested in are these last two. Chain rule and hmm, quotient, no, product rule. Chain rule, product rule. We're going to use these to approach this thing because of course a quotient, right? Like say, oh, I don't know, four divided by two. I can rewrite any quotient I like as a product. It's just gonna be a different pair of numbers that I introduced, right? This is a quotient four divided by two. What would I have to multiply this by in order to be the same thing? Half. A half, right? So in other words, dividing by this means multiplying by its reciprocal. Is that okay? Multiplying by its reciprocal. So here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rewrite if that's, that's my starting point, therefore, just going on, f of x is really equal to u of x, right, times 1 over v of x. You're like, well, that's, that's pretty obvious, right? Yes, it is, but now, excuse me, I can treat it as a quotient, uh, sorry, as a product, right? It's this times this, okay? Now, we know roughly what should happen when we do a product. We know what to do there. But this guy complicates things, right? Let me bring him over here for a second. Uh, let's suppose that what I have is one over, hmm, let's just do one over say x plus one. Okay, if this is what I would differentiate. What would we do with this thing? Because you can differentiate this. You know, you have enough tools at your disposal. Yep. Um, put it to the top, so x plus one to the power of Cool. Yes, x plus one to the power of negative one. Okay. So this is better than this because now I have it in terms of power. I know what to do with powers. Okay. Next step. Yeah. Chain rule. Okay. So I've got a function of a function. Okay. So what would I do? I would say okay, minus one, minus one at the front. The power x came down. Times x plus one times one. Okay. I reduce the power by one. And then I multiply by one. What's that last one that I've put on there? Yeah, it's the inside, isn't it? It's, uh, it's this guy. It's this guy there, okay? Let's slightly change the question. Suppose what I started with was not one over x plus one. That's very simple. What if I started with a two? If I put a two in there, how would this whole thing change? Yeah, look it up. Okay, so I've got this, yeah. right? Be and then I've got that. And then, that would be two. and then I'd have that. Yeah. Good. Okay. Did you want to ask something? Yeah. Um, yeah, just for the if f equals gx equals that. I don't, it doesn't make sense when I say it in words. It's like if f gx equals. Oh, f sorry. F g of x. Sorry, this should say this. That's what it should say. Is that okay? Derivative of that is that. So the. I'll figure it out. Okay, sorry, that was my mistake. Okay, sorry, can we pedal back? Is that alright? So here, if I were to tie this whole thing up, what have I got? Uh, it looks like I have a minus sign out the front and a 2. And this guy's going to go on to the denominator. Do you agree with that? 2x plus 1 all squared. Yep. Okay, now, taking that knowledge over to this guy, right? Because this is really v to the power of minus one. It's the same thing, right? So when I differentiate it, what's gonna happen? Okay, let's just, let's just think about him, okay? Firstly, I'm going to have to bring the power out the front, minus one. Wait, what are we differentiating? This guy here. Just that one? Yep. Okay. We'll do the rest of it in a second. Okay. 
Okay, we're differentiating that. This is v of x all to the power of minus one. So it's just like this. It's just like this situation. Okay. So my minus one has come out the front. Okay. I'm just going to have v of x, and then I have to reduce its power by one, don't I? So it was minus one before, so now it'll be minus two. You okay with that? Okay. But then I'm not finished yet, right? Power came out the front, reduced the power by one, and then I had to do one more thing. I had to multiply by, in this case I multiply by two. Why did I multiply by two? Because mm, it's the derivative of that inside function, right? Now I don't even know what that is. But I can just say its derivative should be v dash. Right, do you agree with that? Okay, now all of that, all of that, right, I should stop saying it, is the derivative of that. That's just that one, one little piece, okay? So now that I know that, I'm gonna go straight into the actual differentiation. So now I'm gonna say, what's f dash? Okay, now I have this piece. Hmm. Bonnet hat. My normal product rule says, uh, v u dash plus u v dash, right? Second function, first function. Actually, it doesn't ma matter because it's just a sum. I can flip the order around if I like. But I'm going to have this thing. That's the second function. Right? Times u dash. Well, that's the derivative of the first function, which coincidentally is also called u dash. Okay. Then what do I do? I add u and then I multiply by all of this. This is the derivative, the derivative of the second piece. It's a bit of a long awful mess, isn't it? But that's okay. Right? I've got minus, I'm just going to do it word for or letter for letter. Okay. Are you right with that? So in other words, what I've got here the product rule, the normal product rule, has four pieces. One, two, three, four. Can you see the four pieces? One, two, three, and this awful mess over there. Okay? All right. Now that we have all the pieces there, all that's required is to tidy it up. And it looks terrible, but we can get there. For starters, we know this is all functions, right? So I'm going to stop saying of x, of x, of x, of x, of x. Is that okay? Did you want to raise something before I go on? No. You want to suggest my next line? Perhaps, yes. Okay, all right. Let's tidy up and then you can tell me the next line. So what have I got here? Uh, 1 over v times u dash plus u, big bracket in there, minus v to the minus 2 v dash. By the way, you remember I said to you, I don't like dash notation. Doesn't it look just like a 1 in this context? Because I've got indices flying around. I'm just going to go with it. And I'm going to be really obvious when I state what's going to go, what's happening. Um, in a second, it will come out pretty clearly, I hope. Okay. Do you want to give us a suggestion? Uh, you have a minus on the inside of the big bracket, so you can take it out to replace the plus. OK, so this minus here, this is like this, this times this, right? So I'm going to go u dash on v. I'm just going to stick them up the top. Minus u v dash it doesn't matter which order I suppose but I might as well put that one there there you go okay now I want to put these two things together because it's kind of two terms at the moment it's a bit messy this guy here right this is actually u dash on v this is actually on the bottom isn't it that should be u v dash on v squared do you agree with that now, very, very close to putting these on a common denominator. In fact, I reckon it's so easy we can do it on this line, right? I want v squared in both places, right? So if I multiply the denominator by v, I should do the numerator. Okay. Now, you'll notice I did something a bit funny, which is I put the v on the front instead of after, because alphabetically it's not right. But it, it, I want it to parallel to this, okay? Because it means less things for me to remember, okay? So now I've got v, u dash minus u v dash, that looks familiar, doesn't it? All over v squared. Product rule is a vuv. The quotient rule 
is a vuv on v squared, right? Uh, though do watch out, do watch out, it's not just any ordinary vuv, there's a plus here and there's a minus there, right? And that's an easy thing to miss, okay? So you can see where the minus came from. It came from the fact that I'm one over this, so it's v to the minus one. That's why I multiplied by minus one in the first place, okay?